Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Fangs by Yasutaka Ikeda and published by Cosmos. It plays five to eight players, it takes roughly about 30 minutes to play, and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game Fangs, you are playing as a hidden role. There's vampires, werewolves, and humans, and depending on the number of players in the game is how many of each type will be present. These roles are all hidden identities, and your objective is to, as vampires, defeat the werewolves, as werewolves defeat the vampires, or as humans, they each have their own unique objective, and they're not necessarily working for anyone, uh, let alone the werewolves or vampires. And you're going to go into the game, move to locations, rolling the dice, attacking other players, and trying to push each player's life total um, up, so on the damage track, up to the point where they actually reach their total cap. And if they do so, they're out of the game. And of course, when your objective is complete, whether it be eliminating a certain species in the game, or completing your own unique objective as a human, the game will trigger an ending and you will find out who wins. This game is a predecessor to an original game that I have from Z-Man from a while ago called Shadow Hunters, and I believe also Hunters of the Night by Cosmos in 2010. This is an old, out-of-print game that many of you might be familiar with. Uh, it is a game that I've had for quite some time and is like, very, very expensive now to purchase. It's been out of print for a while now. And I think if you want to get it on eBay, it's like 200 and something dollars. Uh, so yeah, you're probably not going to get that one. But this one here has got that game plus the expansion within this game here. There's a few slight changes to the game and also a few extra variants to it, uh, but for the most part it plays exactly the same as Shadowhunters. So if you understand how to play Shadowhunters, you can skip over the setup and of course the gameplay and just go ahead and see my review for this game, which will talk about all the new and included extra benefits you'll get when you pick up this game as well. The setup for the game Fangs is simple, and if you've played Shadowhunters before, it is the exact same setup. You're going to take the damage track, attach it together, and then you're going to place all the player damage markers on the bottom in the zero location. Then you're going to place all the player markers in the middle of where the game is going to be played. In order to play the game and have an area, you're going to basically take the location deck, shuffle it, and then deal it out so that the arrows are facing clockwise around the table. Then, you're going to go ahead and give each player a turn overview card, which will also include his or her player colors. Set aside the Oracle, Advantage, and Combat decks and make sure that they are shuffled. Then, based on the number of players, take a human and two werewolves and a two vampires for a five player game, and with more players it will explain in the rulebook how you'll choose to set it up. If you're playing for the first time, take out any swirl character cards and set them aside. These are advanced and a different characters that you can use as part of an expansion for the game. Then, explaining a five player game, take two random werewolves, two random uh, vampires, and one random human and deal them out to each player, one for each player. And then go ahead and remove the rest of the character cards from the game. Each player should now have a turn overview card, a hidden roll, a damage marker at zero, and a character in the middle of the board. After that, take the two dice and set them near the damage track, and the game is ready to begin. There's a couple variants to this game, and one I will explain is when you're playing a larger game, you can choose to start with an oracle phase. An oracle phase is simple. Each player is going to be dealt one oracle card, and then in turn order, starting from one player and moving to the next, go ahead and deal out, that player will deal out an oracle card to the player to their left. That player will answer that question by doing something on the game board and then discarding that oracle card to the discard deck face down. Oracle cards are always placed face down, whereas the rest combat and advancement cards or bonus cards are going to be placed face up. And that will kind of give everybody a little bit of information about other people around the table. So it's a good way of keeping track of people in a larger player game. However, with a five and a six player game, you won't need to do this step. Then select a starting player. The starting player is going to take both dies. There's a four-sided die and a six-sided die, and they will roll those dice. Then they will move to the location with that number. So for instance, if blue was starting and blue rolled a seven, blue would go ahead and take their character piece and move it to the graveyard, because in the upper left-hand corner is the marker of seven. Each of the different locations has either one or two numbers. In this case, the hut has two or three, the witch has an eight, spring of wisdom is a four or five, seven, nine, and six. If you ever roll a 10, you can move to any location you want. And if you're ever on a location when you roll the same number, you must roll again. So you must always move to a new location on your turn. After you have rolled and moved, you will participate in whatever the location has to offer. For instance, the graveyard will let you draw a combat card. When you draw the combat card, you will do its effect immediately. If it's an equipment, you will place it in front of you. If it is a action, you will basically uh, 
give it to yourself or to one of the players in the game. Sometimes they will do damage, sometimes they will help you in combat with in increased uh, additional damage, and so on and so forth. Uh, the stone circle is going to let you steal equipment from other players. The chapel will let you take advancement cards. The uh, Oxius hut will allow you to draw an oracle card and give it to another player. When you give an oracle card to another player, you'll secretly look at the card, hand it to the player of your choice, they will read the card, and then answer the question based on what the yes and no um, would require. So for instance, if I said, here, Callie, here is a card that I want you to answer the question. The card will say something like, if you're a werewolf, take a damage. If you're not a werewolf, do nothing. And so she would either take a damage if she was a werewolf, or she would do nothing otherwise. And of course, you're also going to have the Witch's Tree, which will either do two damage to a player or heal a player for one. And Spring of Wisdom is nice. It lets you draw any card you'd like. Uh, this deck here, this little potion deck, is going to basically be the same thing as the combat deck, but the equipment is a lot nicer and more helpful to you. And the events are also more helpful in general and nicer to you as well. You can have as many equipment as you would like. You're always going to be playing cards that you draw and your objective remains the same throughout the entire game. After you've moved to that location and performed that action, then you're going to check your range. Your range is going to be the location you're at and the adjacent location to the left. So for instance, in this case here, blue is going to be adjacent to green, but will not be adjacent to yellow. However, yellow will be adjacent to blue, and yellow will also be adjacent to red, but will not be adjacent to purple. And that's basically the idea of combat. You'll be taking these die, you'll be rolling them, and then you'll be checking the difference. It doesn't matter which way the difference goes, whatever the difference is, is the amount of damage the player that is in your distance will be taking if you choose to attack. You don't have to attack, but if you do, take the difference, a six and a two would be four, and if blue chose green, they would take four damage on the track here. When you take damage, if your marker ever goes past your life total, you're dead. That would be the end of the game for you. And your objective in the game is, like I said, defeat all players that are not working for you or complete the unique human objective that you have on your player card. What's unique about your player character cards is that you can reveal them on your turn. And if you do so, they'll have a unique ability that will affect the game in some way. One human might want to be the last person alive or be alive at the end of the game. Or perhaps you're playing as a werewolf that does additional damage to other players or a vampire that when he does damage, it heals itself and so on and so forth. After you have moved, chose a location, and then of course done the action on the location, and then chose to attack or not, you'll pass the dice to the player on your left, and the game will proceed like that until one of the three sides wins. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. It's rather simple, there's not a lot of complexities to it as far as how it is played, and of course there's additional rules and variants in the book which will allow you to play with more uncertainty. The game can be played with four players when you're playing with this variant, and anything goes, meaning you can put all the character cards and basically see what happens in a large player game. So let's talk about my review and all the additional changes and updates and upgrades to this comparatively to the game uh, Shadowhunters. All right, so let's talk about Fangs. And in order to talk about Fangs, we have to also talk about Shadowhunters by Z-Man Games. And of course the Night Hunters, I believe, uh, Hunters of the Night by Cosmos in 2010. Uh, those games are out of print now. Shadowhunters being the original one, it's a game I owned previously back before I even played um, or reviewed board games, I should say, not played them. Um, it was one of the first games I've ever owned as well. I picked it up in an old board game shop, kind of in a shelf somewhere, and we played the ever-loving hell out of the game. We played it a ton of times. All of my friends know the game very well and have constantly asked to play it over and over again. Uh, but now the game has, has been out of print. It's also hundreds of dollars in order to get the game, especially a brand new copy of the game. Forget about it unless you've got stacks on stacks. Uh, uh, it's not going to be possible. But uh, Fangs here is a, a living replica of the previous copy of, of Shadow Hunters. This is going to come with all the basic characters you know and love. If you've never heard of the game before, it's going to come with 10 specific characters, three werewolves, three vampires, four humans. All the decks are going to be the same, except I think there's two additional cards in each of the combat and advancement decks. And then of course, you're going to have the Oracle cards, which are like the witch cards. These guys will ask questions and you'll determine what players are what. Uh, differences in the game. Turn overview cards instead of colored boards. 
These present a higher quality of play while the boards are a higher quality of production. Um, instead of a game board, you're going to be getting cards and uh, the tokens here are the same pretty much as the previous one, player tokens, but the damage tokens have been reduced in quality with little squares as opposed to these circles. And then of course you get your board for life, which tracks the different characters and the different types of characters there are. And of course the blood moon space, which is nice whenever somebody gets the blood moon and gives it to another player, that player will move to that location. And it's nice to have it symbolized on the track as well. Uh, the die, instead of being an average four-sided die, is one, one like this, which is really nice and easier to, to read when rolling the dice and having to compare the differences. Oh, that's two damage. Uh, that's zero damage. As opposed to having to look at it, you know, like those little three-sided dice have. And then, of course, it comes with an expansion, which might be in the expansion for Shadowhunters, because I do know it has an expansion. I just don't own it. But there are 10 additional characters, and they switch out based on the letters of the character's name. So, for instance, here, Akino would switch out with um, Akira, and you can go ahead and switch these out interchangeably if you'd like. But I would always suggest to play with the base characters for your first game when learning. These are just extra that you can choose to utilize. This game is an excellent game. If you like trader games and deception games with a mix of combat, a mix of moving around the board and collecting equipment, playing cards on each other, there's deception and not only that, but there is a lot of communication and even silent communication, utilizing these oracle cards to help determine who is what and where and what they're doing and why they're choosing to do certain things. You might misread a card, which could be your downfall and it could be your fault. And of course, uh, when working with another player, um, you might kind of turn to find out they were lying to you the entire time because some characters can lie in the game. Or maybe uh, you thought they did one thing, but they did another thing and for a very specific reason. There's just a bunch of twists and turns in the game. Uh, it's a very faithful re re renderation or re recreation of the game Shadowhunters, probably because it's by the same designer. The copy I have here, of Shadowhunters. Uh, this one here doesn't have the designer's name anywhere that I can see on it, which is a bummer. This one here does, which is nice to know, but I'm going to guess it's the same designer. I mean, I hope so. Um, and what I can say about this game is it comes with additional components. It's fitting a smaller box. It's going to be much cheaper than even this game was before it became ridiculously inex expensive and out of print. And everything you need in order to play the game. The production quality is slightly lower. There's not as much deluxified components, but everything here is that you need in order to play the game exists. And it's very easy to set up, very easy to explain, very easy to teach. And you're going to play this game many, many times. I have kept Shadowhunters in my collection for uh, forever now. And I I will be keeping it now. I just won't be playing it anymore. I'm going to be setting it aside into my collectible shelf and Fangs is going to be the game I'm going to be playing from now on whenever I want to play Shadowhunters because it's literally the same game with additional stuff in it, an extra expansion and some unique twists and turns including like the Oracle turn, how you attack in combat and any additional variants that it talks about. I'm going to try that, be able to switch it between all the different characters and just see what happens. I love everything about this game. This is a game that holds a lot of nostalgia for me. I, I have been playing this game for a long time, so maybe my opinions are biased because it's been such a, I've been uh, having it for such a long time, but I've, when I played this one here, we played with a bunch of new players and they wanted to play again. They enjoyed the game profusely. So that should tell you how good of a game this is and how uh, long it's been it's, it's held up now I'm sure if you go ahead and look at reviews for not only this game but the other different variations of this game you will see a lot of positivity regarding them and also a lot of nostalgia and if you are interested in picking this game up I would give it my seal of approval it's something that you're definitely going to want to play if you like deception and trader games if you don't like arguing if you don't like getting mad at each other there's gonna be times in this game where that's going to happen you'll attack players on your team or they will attack you you'll make a poor mistake which could end it for your entire team and so there's a Lot of blame to be thrown around because there's a lot of blame that needs to be thrown around based on mistakes uh, that you make that you'll learn as you play the game fangs excellent game good pick it up now all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game fangs if you're interested in picking it up there's a link down below in the description from cosmos you can also go to our website unfilteredgamer.com blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more we appreciate you watching. You can also go ahead and check our live streams every Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one. And in fact, uh, on Halloween, we'll probably be playing Fangs. It's a good nostalgic trip down memory lane, along with the fact that it, be, it is a spooky game. I'm glad I got it just in time for it. And of course, Patreon members, a buck a month goes a long way. We appreciate it. Your support uh, helps us keep our lights on here, lets us uh, buy new equipment, and of course, uh, the Discord upgraded, and the Twitch uh, and, and the OBS, so, so 
anyway, thank you, thank you so much. All right, guys, as always, I look forward to sinking my fangs into you next time.